if you buy seafood at the supermarket or eat seafood at restaurants, have you ever wondered how the fish got on your plate or where it came from? This video is not about overfishing. It isn't about life in the ocean, but life at sea catching the seafood that the world eats, the true cost of it. This is about human rights issues, to be specific. Globalized human trafficking and slavery in the fishing and seafood industry. I know this sounds absurd, and if you live in a developed country, you're probably about to click out. But hold on, you're the target audience as American seafood consumers or their pets have likely eaten seafood provided by slaves. In 2014, The Guardian's investigation revealed that seafood produced by slavery was sold at giant international retailers such as Walmart, Care4, and Tesco. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the reality, what's happening mainly in Southeast Asia, and how the rest of the world, including the Western developed countries, is implicated in this horrific violation of human rights through the global seafood supply chain. So, to begin with, according to Supply Chain Dive, the multi-billion global fishing industry accounts for 11% of the global enslaved population. And a 2018 study by Science Advances says that in 2016, widespread forced labor in seafood work was reported in 47 countries, with incidents reported in New Zealand, Ireland, the United States, and Taiwan. Now, Thailand is one of the world's largest seafood exporters, and its export was valued at $6.5 billion in 2017. With the United United States and Japan being its largest customers. Now, the Thai seafood industry is globally notorious for being the most abusive and destructive economic sectors in the world. Decades of overfishing by the Thai fishing industry under poor fisheries management has led to a marine diversity crisis in Thai waters. However, the pressure by the increasing global demand for cheap seafood pushed the fishing vessels outwards into foreign waters for their catch. Fuel costs are unavoidable, but they could twist the labor cost, which makes up 60% of the total operating cost. An estimated 20,000 young men and boys, mostly migrants from Myanmar and Cambodia seeking steady jobs, are trafficked and tricked by brokers onto fishing boats, unaware that they'll be working as slaves on isolated floating labor camps. They're mostly forced to repay the boat owners their own recruitment fees, tricking them into a state of perpetual servitude. Now, according to the US government, Forced labor under this condition referred to as debt bondage is considered slavery. The Associated Press year-long investigation revealed some shocking facts. They realized she could speak Burmese, began calling out to her asking for help and explaining that they were trapped and that they were being beaten and that they were enslaved. She went onto the island and there were men in a cage. These men had been locked up because when they came into shore, the concern was that they would run away. And from their descriptions, they were slaves. By the definition of modern day slavery, absolutely. They were trapped. They had no way to go home. They had not heard from their families in five, 10 years. They're forced to work between 17 to 20 hours a day, given only two hours of sleep in the morning and at night, given rotten fish to eat, and forced to drink water dripping from air conditioners. They're constantly beaten, tortured, and murdered. According to a report by the United Nations, 59% of the victims on Thai fishing vessels witnessed the murder of a fellow worker. Some have seen as many as 20 workers getting murdered and thrown into the sea. Many jump and commit suicide because that's their only escape. Now, something called transshipment, the industry's standard practice, is a facilitator of illegal fishing and labor exploitation. In short, the fish caught by slaves on those ships are transferred onto a big mothership in the middle of the ocean, which then carries the fish back to port. Meaning, most of the slaves are trapped on an isolated ship in the middle of the ocean without seeing the land for years. Some of them are kept on some of the most remote islands on Earth. That's what the NPR audio clip is about. Men kept in a cage, they are out of sight. Now the new documentary, Seaspiracy, contains a drone footage of a slave calling for help after noticing the drone in the sky. Transshipment is what allows them to make it impossible for the slaves to escape and still get their catch processed and shipped to giant supermarkets all over the world within days. Many of the fish it collects are called trash fish, which are fish that humans do not like to eat, so they're turned into fish meal, cheap protein to feed farm pros. Much of the shrimp is also processed by slaves, often including children. According to Associated Press, US customs records showed the shrimp made its way into supply chains of 40 US brands and major US retailers such as Walmart, Kroger, and Whole Foods. And investigators found products made with slavery in all 50 states in 2015. It wasn't just the US, it also went to Carefor, Tesco, and Aldi in Europe, and many more. And the companies like CP 
Turkey Foods and Thai Union, who the retailers bought them from, admitted that there was slavery in their supply chains. So the cheap, nicely packaged, super convenient, already peeled frozen shrimp that the Western countries consume came at the expense of human exploitation and slavery. Now, is this still happening today? Wait till the end of the video. According to New York Times, fish meal is also used for pet foods and feed for poultry and other livestock animals such as pigs and farmed fish that Americans consume. So even if you only eat farmed fish in any country, fish like salmon are carnivores, meaning they're fed wild caught fish. So the risk is still the same. The Environmental Justice Foundation said, the fish meal industry has masked the true economic and ecological cost of overfishing by overvaluing the trash fish. The Thai prone or seafood industry in general cannot exist without this slave labor. This is why the ships are converted to carry humans, not fish. Because humans generate three times more money than fish. Human trafficking and forced labor have become fundamental to the economic logic to the Thai seafood sector. So why is this even possible today? It's simple. 1. It's extremely difficult to monitor fishing activities by nature. 2. During transshipment, fish caught legitimately and illegally get mixed up so it's virtually impossible for us to know the origins. 3. The industry heavily relies on the complicity between the police, government officials, and brokers. 4. Poor law enforcement. According to New York Times, most fishing vessels are exempt from international rules, requiring the onboard tracking systems used by law enforcement. Center for American Progress says, production of seafood for non-human consumption is excluded from supply chain monitoring just because it's not consumed by humans but the animals humans raise. Does that sound right? This isn't unique to Thailand, this is a global issue. Sea slavery was reported in the UK and Ireland. One of the newest cases was in the United States. Up to 700 migrants were fishing on US registered vessels under the condition of debt bondage. So yes, that's legit slavery. They did not have their visas, so they were detained, aka trapped on board, and the catch was sold at stores like Whole Foods and Costco, and was marketed as sustainable seafood produced by Hawaii's hardworking fishermen. When it was illegally caught by enslaved migrants, plus its fishing practice perfectly follows the model of unsustainable fishing according to the Environmental Justice Foundation. Now, let's talk about tuna, the most consumed fish globally. 60% of the world's tuna catch comes from the Pacific. Yes, the industrialization of tuna fishing has caused the collapse of the tuna population as well. And according to a report by Business and Human Rights Resource Center, the exact same practice is seen in a wider area. Illegal fishing and labor exploitation by vessels from more regions is becoming increasingly common due to the growing demand for cheap seafood. 80% of the world's largest tuna companies do not know where their tuna comes from. The researcher said that modern slavery is endemic in the industry, where the tuna supply chain is remote, complex, and opaque. And according to Greenpeace, the catch went to North America, Japan, Europe, Russia, Australia, and so on. Now the National Fisheries Institute, an organization that makes up 75% of the US fishing industry said, mistreatment of workers is unacceptable and illegal in any circumstance, and such report is disturbing and disheartening. But at the same time, in a leaked document, the very same organization responded to the documentary Sea Spiracy by basically denying the existence of human trafficking in the industry, and by calling the film dishonest propaganda. I talked about the leaked pre-planned attack in this video, and that's because of course, its members include Walmart, Whole Foods, Bumblebee, acquired by FCF, the world's largest tuna trader, with slavery in its supply chain, and other multinational corporations that they get money from. So this is the global seafood industry, and that's what they've got to say about these human rights issues. Now the question is, is this still relevant in 2021. The short answer is, it's largely not getting fixed. Despite the Thai government's ratification of the International Labor Organization's Work in Fishing Convention in 2019. In 2019, many of the world's leading human rights organizations co-signed the statement, criticizing the Marine Stewardship Council's new chain of custody certification for not identifying, preventing, or protecting seafood workers from labor rights violations. The new requirements for assessing risk and preventing child labor and forced labor will not provide buyers and retailers with the assurance 
experience that child labor and forced labor are not present in their supply chains. Human Rights Watch has been criticizing the country's new policies and protection networks for allowing new cases for forced labor to go undetected. Still, only 30% of the workers are protected today. The United Nations report says the human trafficking industry heavily relies on the corruption among police and government officials who are rarely arrested or even punished. Human Rights Watch sent a letter to the Prime Minister saying that the port in port out system is superficial or theatrical. Policies such as Memorandum of Understanding, which provides Burmese workers to the Thai fishing industry legally and safely, is nothing different than licensed human trafficking because the problem occurs after the process. Plus, according to the United Nations and US standards, as long as the practice of transshipment continues to exist in the industry, all the seafood from those particular motherships, processing plants or companies is considered to be associated with slavery. So yes, it's safe to say that there most likely is slave produced seafood in the global market today. But more importantly, we cannot ignore that there are still thousands of people enslaved in the middle of the ocean with no escape this very second. Policies aren't working, so it's up to consumers to stop this. The total collapse of the marine life in the ocean is not just a global environmental issue, but also a global systematic human rights issue. They go hand in hand, and we are all collectively responsible for it. As companies look to capitalize on the increasing demand for seafood, the need to monitor and identify human rights abuses in the supply chain is becoming more important. That's true. But again, as Sustainalytics says, the more environmental issue gets serious, the higher risk of human rights abuses there is. So that's not the right approach to protect our ocean and the people. The smartest, most certain and promising way for consumers to stop the degradation of the ocean and the abuse of human rights is to switch to plant-based protein and leave the ocean alone. It is 2021. We don't need to eat fish or shrimp pizza for survival or for our health, especially in developed countries. There are plant-based alternatives for seafood in the market today, such as those from Good Catch. Or if you're like me, you can make very satisfying plant-based fish and chips, sushi, tuna rolls, scallops, and delicious tuna salad sandwiches, and many more with ordinary ingredients at home. You can find those recipes on my channel. Please like, comment, and share this video with people you know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.